love, love my song backwards. I'm starting to dig it. I don't ever need rights to this song. I'll listen to it backwards forever until Thunder says it's okay to play Love Walked in the Door. Hey, it's Southside Steve with Brett Barney and special guest Mix Master Mark from Regular Guys fame on Rock 100.5. We are back on mics again on the Yeah Come On show. How are you doing? I won't tell people what you said off air that hurt me deeply, you know, as Brett Barney snickers. Uh, but you can go ahead and rip me, Mark, if you want. You nope. son of a bitch. I will tell him on air. Damn, Steve, you're looking old. What the hell Am I really? to you? Am I really? Well, okay, For real? let's be honest. Steve, let's be honest. We have not actually seen each other, like, face-to-face. This is the first time I've seen your face outside of the billboard or a website or, like, social media this is the first time we've had a real conversation and no mm-hmm. lie in it in probably 10 years at least yeah it's been 10 years yeah you're, you're spot on because uh you left about three or four years before the regular guys were over on rock 100.5 and then of course uh we started uh bailey and Southside, and i think we're in our sixth year so it's been a minute man yeah i left in 2012 and uh, okay. I mean, we still t- don't get me wrong it wasn't like yeah, screw you Steve, man yeah come on my <laughs> No, it wasn't even like that. It was just, it just, that's just how it happens. You know, you were working on your career and I was working on my thing. I left uh, Rock 100 to go over to the 19 on the game. And so there was no animosity like no. on the show, but none between us. But it's good to see your old ass again. How you been, man? I'm so Thank proud you. Of you. I'm so, uh, here's why, let me tell you something. Here's why I'm so proud of Southside Steve. Yeah, come on. It's because you're yeah, still, you're still chasing it and you're still owning it. Like, yeah. let's be honest, Steve, how long have you been doing this in Atlanta? 26 years. That's fan damn tastic. I'm mm-hmm. so, listen, say what you will. And there are people out there, Southside Steve haters. Say, oh, yeah. Steve, and Steve would say, and when we were on regular guys in Rock 100, he would always be like, you damn keyboard warriors, come at me, keyboard warriors. And there are people, but to have that kind of longevity in Atlanta radio, and especially through 2021, through the 08 crash and then through the pandemic and everything, I got, I mean, I got nothing, but I've always been a fan of your Steve, but dude, my respect for you being in the business this long is out of control. So I'm, I'm so happy for you and I'm glad that you're still involved with it. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. It, it started technically in 92 when I was on um, 88.5 at Georgia state, you know, I, I was on and I, I wanted to do stand up. Next thing I know, I start doing the radio thing. Cause I was working with a guy that worked at the airlines that was doing that. And he's like, man, you got to get on the radio station. So it took about a year cause I was conservative and they were all wearing black and uh, you know, and, and all into the cure. And I was wearing Tommy Hilfiger with tassel loafers. So it didn't help me much. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I finally got in, and you're right. It changed my destiny when I, uh, you know, in advertising, started working with 96 Rock, turned in some air checks, and here we are. So it's been a run, you know, and I enjoyed uh, the way we kicked off Rock 100.5 in 2008. And what I want to do at this point, Mark, is just say, first off, welcome to the Yet Come On Show. Uh, I will not nail you in your sack the way you did me. Uh, I will say that, yes, I see some gray in your goatee. Oh, it's, oh, it's pathetic. Look at that. Look yeah, at that right there. It's, I see I it. Mean, it's, you had no gray. Matter of fact, when I met you, I don't even think you could grow hair on your face. So you started growing it, and then it went gray so quick. That's got to And guess what? Since then, what? Uh, my other testicle has dropped. So it took a little yes. extra time, but a lot oh. has changed over the years. I noticed your voice, your voice is deeper, you know, I can tell, I know your testicles drop, you know, and I'm waiting on, uh, you know, I hate it that my uh, co-host Brett Barney got married with his sack not dropping yet, but you know, it's, <laughs> well, no, it's not easy. The, no, no, no. They did drop, but they dropped right into a formaldehyde jar and then the wife put them in the basement. <laughs> so they done. Yeah, he knows. I, I told him, I said, you get married. It changes, bro. My wife sold all my toys uh, gave me two wonderful children and sleepless nights. And, uh, I just walked out on a little boy in the bedroom in his little, you know, car bed holding his, uh, he's into Scooby-Doo and he's holding his mystery machine. Daddy, you'll come back. Right. And I'm like, yes, I will. No, I won't. And I just lied to my child. But, he but here's me. the thing though. How many times have you left a woman's house and the kid said, you'll come back. Right. And you're like, yes, no, well, no, I'm not. We all know I'm not. I did have the oldest girl I ever dated was a year younger than me. Everybody else was about 
15 years, always younger than me. You know that you've seen it firsthand, but you know, it's just cause I was out and younger girls were still, I mean, I could still get it. I guess now I look old now that I'm married. Um, but, uh, damn, that's it. It's the married thing. That. Yeah, that's it. That's what no, it is. No, no, it is. No, Steve, it's the kid thing because I mean, I've got an eight year old and, yeah. and, don't, and Brett, I, and again, this is like two married dudes talking about being married with kids, but I will tell you something, kids change it. And you know, kids oh, hell yeah. Yeah, kids force you to slow down and become an adult, ish. But I mean, yeah. so I tell you, I tell you this right now, Brett. Just enjoy because this is really the fun. Stuff. Brett, how old are you? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay, so dude, live it up, dude. You know, travel, drink, party, stay out late, good festivals, go to whatever, whatever. Because once you have that kid, all your time and effort, and energy needs to go to that kid. So that's why I'm saying live it up now. Much like Steve, I had a kid when I was later in life. I didn't have Caroline until I was what thirty-five. So, you know, I got all of it out of me. I wasn't like those 22-year-olds still trying to party, still trying to go to Wild Bill, still trying to go to Vision with the damn sitter at home. So, Brett, man, I'm going to give you any advice now. Just live it up and have fun. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on, dude. I started working with you at 46, 45, somewhere in there. 2008. How old were you in 2008? uh, I'll say I was born in 65. Carry the three. Yeah, no shit. 65, 75, 85, 95, 2005. I'm on 2005. So yeah, I was 43, 43. Okay. So, but, but here's my thing. You know, I, I raised hell until I was 47. That's when Amanda and I got serious and, uh, and then I got married, but I didn't have my first kid till 52 and had my second one at 55. So different. Yeah. How is, like I'm de- like I'm, de- I'm not being a dick. I'm dead serious. Like, how is your energy level? Like, you're you're still doing the morning show, so you're still getting yeah. up butt ass crack of dawn. You got two kids. I know you've always been an entrepreneur. You've always got your hands in about fourteen different things. Like, what's your energy level after all these years? It's uh still high, dude. Um, it's not it, it, in a moment. If you get a cocktail or two into me, it's as high as it was when I was 25 years old. Okay. Um, I get fired up. But if you let me, you know, just go all day, about nine o'clock, I start hitting a wall just because it's been nonstop with the kids. You know, they don't they don't stop. And then you're trying to squeeze life in between daddy, 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 you know, and, it, and that's it's, just it's Brett. different. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, God, I know. And it's also his pride. I'm like, damn, man, we're both y'all. She calls you daddy, daddy too? Yes, yes. <laughs> nice. Yes. Every time the lights go off, I hear daddy. I'm like, stop it. Go to Brett. I don't know go who it is. Brett. I you don't know, know it's if funny? it's the wife or the kid. We'd, we'd been married, what, like four days, and then she's we're out to eat, and she's giving Mark a back massage. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's okay. She's handsy and it's yes, okay sir. to be handsy. Sure. As long as there's no intercourse, handsy's okay. But I will tell you the whole reason we got stuck on this dead talk is because I do go to the high school reunion. The two chicks outside of my girlfriend in high school, which took my virginity, are like hot as hell and still hot as hell. And this was 20 years ago. But I end up, 2004 is when it was. And I end up making out with one upstairs in my friend's house. I make out with the other one in the basement. And I'm going to, I got to choose. What am I going to do? I got this one and this one. Well, I, I made my decision. Next thing I know, I'm taking trips down to Boca Raton to see this chick. And she's driving the Porsche. She's just badass. She's got huge breasts. They're not hers, but I don't care. The doctor got excessive and it was fine. And she has a beautiful 10 year old boy. And I end up moving her up here, 2004. She lives with me. Uh, for 10 months. It's not going to work. I make the call right at Christmas. And the last, the last interaction I had with this kid, now, now I see him all grown up on Facebook is he comes up and I'm blow drying my hair. And, uh, and I'm, I think I'm just wearing a pair of underwear and he goes, I just wanted to say goodbye. I thought you were going to be my daddy. Oh, There's like a couple, there's a couple of moments in my life where I just would love to take back where it's, it's a, it's a fucking movie or a reality show. And that happened. And I went, I'm sorry. And, you know, and I was going on a date that night, you know, and I'm like, gosh, dang it. And then she has to go down to the Steve Steve said he was blow drying his hair. So what he had is the long locks going. He's like, well, hey, kitty yo, kitty yo, wait a minute, what you, hey, what is his name again? Uh, uh, yeah, what, what you doing, you little scrappy son of a gun? How you doing? I know, and he's such a good kid, and I look back on him, I'm like, well, that would have been one direction to go, but I didn't go that direction. 
but I yeah. Hold on, hit pause. Hit pause on Steve story time hour so we can do this. Okay. It's Cinco de Mayo. We need to do a shot. Oh, we do. We do. Damn. I hold on. I got liquor. I think I got liquor right here. I thought you'd be prepared, Steve. All those oh, glowing that's... endorsements I gave you a minute ago, I'm taking them all back. I <laughs> know. Uh, Daddy, all... Daddy, where's your Daddy? Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. Oh, is that legends? Do some legends? Legends of '87. Yeah, I, I keep it Shout down here. Chris Green. Chris Green. Highly, highly uh, recommend Legends, and they just got a, a tequila line out as well. Yeah, they did. Isn't that yep. great? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really proud of him. And of course, Deborah, who worked with us, hit the regular guys, who everybody was scared of, but I loved her to death. Deborah was. Awesome. No, Deborah and I were always we were always cool too. I like Deborah. Yeah, she's one of. You she's now you, killing it. You just can't be a dick. That's all. She didn't like dicks, and she didn't like anybody that wasn't working hard. And you were working hard. Well, and now she's over at WSB. Uh, I think producing for Aram. Yeah. yeah. Cheers, guys. Man, good to see you. Cheers. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Mm. Ooh, this is so smooth. I drink it again. I will tell you that this is also my little brother Matt Rickman's birthday. Uh, so we all got holidays. My other brother's tax day, April fifteenth. But my son is April. Um, excuse me, May fourth. May the fourth be with you. So his birthday was yesterday. Nice, fantastic. You got a lot of shots to take. I did. I just took them for all of them, and I did not name him a Star Wars name. His name is Parker James, not Luke or Leia or or C three PO or whatever the hell. Parker James is either going to be like that traditional uh, private high school quarterback. You know, the white kid with the really long, flowing hair. Can I throw a yeah, at a Trinity High School, private Christian yeah. school? Can who... I throw something out there? You're talking about the wrong <laughs> kid. <laughs> oh, I am. I, I meant Brooke Steven. I meant Brooke Steven. I got my kids mixed up. God bless America. <laughs> oh, too Parker, many shots. Parker <laughs> James is zero. He is zero. He doesn't turn yeah. one until June 18th. Yesterday was Brooke Steven. <laughs> That's whose birthday it was. My okay, four year old. He's four. Back. Brooks sounds like a serial killer. So that damn the name it. You're <laughs> well, I got a killer and a quarterback. What the hell? Here's the yeah. good news. He likes me. He won't kill me. He'll kill others. Not me. Wait, wait, yeah. wait till his teenage years. So one evens <laughs> out the other one though. One goes off to jail. That's a good chapter of your book. The other one becomes a, a one winning quarterback. That's a good chapter of your book. It's all about your books. That's why you book. gotta. That's why you gotta have two boys. All right, having you on right now and your work, I, I know the things you dabbled in when I was around you. Um, and you're right, we see each other on Facebook. Always, yep. there was never any bitterness. Uh, I think anybody on The Regular Guys, that's why that show was so successful. There was You were always trying to get away. Um, mm -hmm. I got away once, uh, and I was in the <laughs> process of getting away when they got fired in 2004. You know, I was wanting off the show. I wasn't running the board when they got blown out. I was uh, in a production room with uh, Tim Rhodes, and we were going to be a midday show. Later, we turned into an afternoon show with a syndicated morning show, which meant we got all the morning show shit. We got to go on the cruises. We got to go to the Bahamas. We got to do it all. Um, and, uh, you know, that was my moment. When I came to Rock 100.5, I'd left country at 106.7, and I wanted to work for the Dickies, and I thought they were cool dudes. They were kind of jocks, and I'm like, can you put this – hate-filled nerd in his place and get him off my ass uh, i'm gonna kill him you know and it was you know, of course not kill him just beat him up real bad but they said yes so that's why i agreed so when i came into rock when i started working with you mark um i was in place yep. but i want to ask you i saw yep. you leave i saw deborah leave i saw yep. you know so many people walk out and i knew the hell you caught uh, Mark was doing my old job. When we got oh. to Rock, they said, Steve, you do not have to run the board. We have somebody that will do it. His name is Mark Owens. I'm like, so you mean all I got to do is sit on a microphone? All you got to do, yes. do is show up 10 minutes after the show starts. Make I did do that a lot. Jokes, tell a couple of stories. We may do an interview, a Southside Steve interview after the show, and then walk around the sales department, get 17 more endorsements, and call it a day. Did people hate me? No. No. Thank you. I'll tell you that straight. No, nobody hated you. Listen, Steve, you were like a, and this is going to sound negative, but it's not, you were a cartoon character. I always yeah. said the same thing about you. Southside Steve going to Atlanta Motor Speedway is like Mickey Mouse in the middle of Disney World. Like, yeah. he is a character within himself. People gravitate to him. No, nope, nobody, nobody did, 
had any, you know, bad feelings about you. Maybe Larry, but like nobody, nobody yeah. was like people were Southside Steve's fans. But it was always funny because you were like, anytime Steve enters a room, you're like, oh god, here he comes. What's he gonna say next? So it's always like Steve would enter a room. It's like the same way with Crash Clark. Crash yes. was the same way when Crash and you. You're a more southern whore version of Crash, where Crash is a very dirty whore version of Crash. Yeah, he he's different. He's a little rough. I don't how he got a traffic gig and holds holds down a TV job. He'll and call kills into it. Us and kills it. He'll and call into us. He'll text me. He'll tweet me right in between or while he's doing his show and says crazy shit. I'm like, oh, yeah. dude, he's, you're on TV. He's doing. I wouldn't he's be living. saying it. He's another one. He's another. He's he's one of the few in Atlanta that have been able to ride this wave of media for it, that and be a personality in Atlanta. Like he literally, he goes by Crash on on Eleven Alive yeah. on the NBC affiliate in Atlanta. A character named Crash is on to, yeah. on TV. So yeah, was, and he does, always, traffic. He, does and he traffic. he does traffic. That's crazy. So um, <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Uh, so and I always love Crash. Crash actually got me my first internship at 99X. So he's another one of those that I will forever be grateful for. Like when Crash was going through kind of some, not his rough break phases, but like when like he was really wild and out of control. I hate Crash. I, I was always a fan of Crash because he helped me out. He was always really, really good to me. And well, yeah, and he was. He was also a guy I, I ran into a lot doing 96 Rock gigs because, you know, 99X, you know, like Axel, who's now my program director, would, uh, you know, I'd be doing Friday nights. He'd do sat, he'd do Sundays on the deck. We were both working the American Pie. You know, yeah. Crash would come to my gigs with one of his many wives or girlfriends. <laughs> and, crash. dude, he would pull – he would have them flash me and oh, just yeah. crazy shit. And I'm like, Crash, you're not going to keep a relationship. But that dude was always – but those are the guys I was interacting with. I had friends at X. Then, then there were people that were hardcore – you know, at X that were like enemies because, yeah. uh, you know, and they were just because they were jerks about it. It was that that well, era. That was, that was also back in the day when there was that guerrilla marketing between oh, yeah. 96 Rock and 99X. Like that's that, those days. Those days are unheard of. Like I mm -hmm. remember. So my progression of, of what led me to the regular guys, like I started out my internship at 99X and then I got a part time on air because I was so desperate and hungry to get into radio. I was like 21 years old, 20 years old. I was literally driving around that little white VW Beetle that 99X owned forever. I was the courier. So this was back in the day <laughs> where we would drive air checks or I'd go drive to bars and pick up, you know, uh, you know, the invoices and take them checks. True story. So I was the courier once. I had that little VW Beetle, drove down to Buckhead to pick up a check from Mako's. You remember Mako's. Yeah, I remember Mako's. I spent a lot of time there. So, they had the fish bowls, right? With and the, the alligators and all the yep. yeah, and the sw the swing. I dated one of the swing girls. That was kind of oh, cool. Of course. Yeah, so I go walking. <laughs> I, it's like a Tuesday afternoon at like two in the afternoon. I go walk in it, and you know, well, you own the bar, you know, you yeah. know that smell of a bar in the middle of the day. It's warm. It's sticky. It's like a combination of like puke, cigarette smoke, and regret. Horrible. Like horrible. The, and nobody's in there. So I remember like opening the door and be like, hey, it's Mark from 99X. I just need to pick up your cash, your payment. And then upstairs, there was like wooden stairs and went up to the office. And this dude pops and leans over the rails like, hey, what's up, man? How are you? I'm like, hey, I just need to pick up. Like, you know, whatever, however much they owed for advertising. I shit you not. He lowers a pail down on a rope. Inside of there was probably five or $10,000 in cash. Cash. All wadded up in bands. And I'm like, thanks, man. And he's like, you want a beer or a shot? I'm like, no, I'm good. And he's like, all right, well, if you all want to go behind the bar and help yourself. I'm like, Those okay. were the days, man. man. Those were the days. So that, it. that was what kind of got me started in radio, being the courier, which led to like part-time weekends. You know, I remember my very first ever on-air shift was at 99X on a Sunday night. So it was officially Monday morning, like 2 to 6 a.m. And dude, mm -hmm. Steve, you can appreciate this. Like, I thought I was shit. Like, I called every, <laughs> I called mom and just, get up, you got to hear, I'm calling ex-girlfriends. You know, like, I told you, I told you I'd make it. Like, I was so <laughs> excited. Uh, and so from there, it led to, that's when they launched Q100. And they right. knew I had all this energy. I was in my early 20s, 
they were Q100 was just getting started. That 100.5. That's when the Burt show was like uh, Burt, Jeff, Jim wasn't on there. Melissa and Lindsay from the Real World. I remember and Lindsay. They, yeah. yeah, they needed a new stunt guy, and so then that's when they created the stunt guy Phil Torrena. So then I was with the Burt show for about five years when Cumulus took over, and they said, "Well, they did." I don't you. I don't know if you were there that during Black Wednesday when Cumulus took over. You weren't there yet, no. Because no, Wednesday, yeah. I, I was across the street. I was at Citadel uh, mm -hmm. on one hundred six point seven, uh, doing uh, country on mornings with rhubarb in Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when Cumulus <laughs> bought over Susquehanna, they had it was called yeah. Black Wednesday, and they fired like fifteen people in one day. So they came to Dang. me and they said, "Listen, you got two choices. You know, you can either get fired." Um, or you can take a pay cut and stay with the Burt Show, or we're about to relaunch uh, a show on 99X because this is when that whole Don Miller morning show and, you know, right. Toucher and Jimmy in the mornings and Toucher, Jimmy and Leslie, all that wasn't working. And so they said, we're going to relaunch a morning show at 99X if you want to get involved. And I said, well, do I have to take a pay cut? And they said, no, we'll give you a raise. So I was like, well, hell, hell yeah. yeah. Bye, well, Burt. <laughs> <laughs> well, that new morning show was the new morning X with Sean, Leslie, and Jenner's. And yes. no offense, and, you know, Sean Demery, God rest his soul, and Leslie, who was always good to me, and Jenner's, who, poor guy, got brought into a bad situation. That show was a mess. I knew, you know, Steve, sometimes when you know, you know. And it you was, do. we weren't even, you know, a week into training with this show. And I was like, this is a hot mess. Because John Dickey loved the original Morning Act so much with Barnes, Leslie, and Jimmy, that he tried to recreate it with Sean Demery and Leslie, mm -hmm. and they wanted Jenner to play the Jimmy character. And it was just a bad show, and it only lasted a year. And that's when they said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. And it was Tim Andrews. They brought Tim Andrews and Seabass on to be part of the New Morning X to write, because Sean Demery was not funny, and they needed somebody to write lines for him. But Tim and Seabass just sat in the back office and just made fun of us the whole time. And then when they, they <laughs> dissolved the show, because uh, I was a board op for that show, when they dissolved it, and I'm like, well, and I was talking to Tim Andrews because we had become friends. Um, he said, I remember standing at Glen Ridge down in that pull through outside of the lobby. Yeah. And I, I remember him saying, well, listen, I think we're about to bring back the regular guys and we need your help. We want you to run the board, but you don't know this yet. I was like, oh, shit. Regular guys? Oh. Yeah. Oh, and this was 2008. And I went, really? And I was like, yeah. And the first person I called was my big brother, Sam, because he was the biggest fan back in the Nice and Rock days. He was like, oh, shit, you're going to work with Team and Larry. Do that. He was more excited than I was. And that's, that's, and that's what brought me to, you know, regular guys. Was it 2-0 or 3-0? Rock 3-0. 3-0. Yeah. Regular guys 3 at Rock 100. And no, you know, that's, and I didn't even know. They had kept it from me. I was still over at Country, and I was coming up on uh, uh, renegotiating. And my bosses, I think, knew that uh, they were going to blow up 106.7. I think that the Dickies had already mentioned they wanted to buy that signal. Um, and it was going to be a bloody day. And it, all he told me goes, if you want to stay, I promise there'll be a position for you here. But it may not be on the station you're on. Which meant really? kicks, yeah, yeah. Which meant kicks, and it was it was Mark uh, Richards who was just awesome, and mm -hmm. he said I can't tell you anything more than that, and then I start getting calls from Larry, and I ended up Larry calls me, begging me, begging me. I mean, the guy was on the phone for an hour and a half, apologized, even cried at one point in time, telling me he was sorry for being such a dick, and that that the ratings went down when I left, when it was just, you know, nothing against Tim Andrews, but it was just Tim when I left The Rock for that year in 2007. And then I'm like, I, I appreciate your apologies, Larry, but you've said this to me before. I don't trust you. Sorry. So then John Dickey calls me and we have a long conversation. He's like, I won't let it happen. Just get your ass over here and let's do this because I'm not doing it without you. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man. So then I go to Mark. I'm like, you've been so kind. I think I'm going to give this a shot. It's probably not a good idea. Turned out it was a great idea because they bought 106.7. Had I said goodbye, no to John when he bought the station, he surely would have fired me for it. Yeah. So, so you know, it all, it all happened the way it did. So I was probably the last to find out what you knew for months. I had no idea. And y'all kept it a pretty good secret. I had no idea. Well, I know, but I think everybody had known for a little while. 
And yeah, but not me. They were keeping it for me, but I think because I was on air on another station. So, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. They well, kept it I for mean, me. This was also sorry. No, I don't wanna I don't wanna buy new virus protection. No, I don't want to, McAfee. Get off my damn screen. Just can be, I swear to God. This is so flash forward way too quick. I got COVID cut from radio back in Labor Day of, of twenty twenty. And I haven't used this computer in probably about six months because now at Impact, we have nice new fancy quick computers. And I went to fire this up and I swear to God, I don't know what took longer, getting home in traffic, which took an hour and a half, or firing up a oh. computer that I haven't used in almost a year. Well, hold that thought. Since you're mentioning that, I want to mention the fine sponsors of the Yeah, Come On Show. Special thanks to uh, Circle285.com for all your insurance needs. This goes for you too, Mark. If you've been with the same insurance company for a while, we know who the three and four big ones are. They put me with somebody else, a type A better. I got more insurance and I got lower deals. Uh, so they'll quote you. So give them a call. All they're going to do is let you know what's out there and what you might be better suited for. Uh, circle285.com. Then there's oxygenfinancial.com with Ted Jenkins. You're no stranger to Ted. Came in on the studio for years. He is a fine sponsor of this program. And lastly, for those having a tough time, Dr. David Markwell, friend to the show, friend of this podcast, and Ridgeline Counseling. And he has two locations, one in the Metro in Marietta and the other one's in Blue Ridge, believe it or not. And he does a lot online if you need to contact him. Tell him we sent you, he'll give you a deal. So I really, that, for a second, I was really uh, nervous. You were about to say one of your sponsors was McAfee virus, virus protection. I was being yeah. like, Oh shit. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't, we don't have McAfee. Uh, but what, what I am enjoying is the story and you are our guest tonight. I will turn it over to Brett Barney here in a second to ask you some questions, which were all, are very out, out of the box. I don't know where he's going to go. I never do. Uh, that's the fun of it, but I, I will say to you, so, you know, you're, you're, at Rock 100.5, you've already said you leave t at 2012. I thought you were being mistreated. I didn't think you deserved half the crap you, you had to deal with. Did you leave for that reason? Um, what was your reason? And then where did you go? So people often ask me, you talk about like in your radio career, you have chapters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, working for, you know, Leslie Fram, my first radio gig, that was a great chapter. So I was just getting involved. Working for Burt was a great chapter because, you know, it was the first time I made radio money and I learned so much. And then working for the regular guys was an incredible chapter because it was, it's such a historic morning show. And mm -hmm. any, even anybody, you know, age 25 and above knows who the regular guys are. And then you reach guys our age, Barney's age, your age, they go, oh, dude, regular guys, I remember this. Or when Steve did this. Or 3.0, when Seabass did this. Or, mm -hmm. you know, everybody has a story. And so mm -hmm. I will always say that 2012 to about – or 20, 2000, sorry, 2008 till about 2010, two, two and a half years were some of the most fun I've ever had in radio. Because cool. there were days, Steve, where we'd be doing regular guy squares – or homeless karaoke, or DUIQ, or beat Steve, shoot Steve, slap Steve, make Steve smell this. And I was an employee. I was a member of the show. But how many times was I sitting back laughing, enjoying the product that we're putting on air? I'd be like, oh crap, we're 10 minutes late. Oh God, because I was thoroughly enjoying being part mm -hmm. of that process. So I will always look back at the first you know, handful of two and a half, three years of the regular guys, it's great. And then yes, Something turned, and you know, Steve, I think you'll admit to this, Tim will, Eric will, something just got weird on that show, and the tension just grew and grew and grew, and I know it's easy to say, you know, oh, it's all Larry, it's all Larry, it's all Larry, it's all Larry. Now, when I say this, I'll tell you this right now, Larry was one of the big reasons I left the show. Mm -hmm. Since then, we have made up, this has been 10 years, we've seen each other at Braves games, I've seen him and Sandra, we've had drinks before, like... So there's no time heals all wounds. I'm in a great spot now. He's in a good spot. Him and Sandra are great. So I have no ill will towards Larry. But back in 2010, 2011, 2012, Larry was a nightmare to work with. And mm -hmm. the, there was so much anger and there was so much tension involved that nobody was happy. Like, mm -hmm. Brett, I'm, I'm sure you've heard stories before that, you know, we'd go to commercial break. That entire studio, including interns, would file out. Everybody walked out because nobody wanted to be in that room. 
And I think one of my breaking points was, you know, obviously part of my job was, uh, you know, keep us on time, run the board, you know, run the clock and everything. And right in the middle of a show, Larry decided that he wanted to change the clocks. And he's like, well, we need to start breaking here instead of here. And you're breaking here, but I want to break here. And I was like, is this not a discussion we can have after the show? He's like, no, 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 you, you know, because you're fat and you're stupid and you don't get it and you're dumb and you're not listening to me. And like, it just kept digging and kept digging. And I'm like, dude, you know, and this wasn't like a one-time thing. This wasn't like, a, you know, okay, well, he was mean to me once. So I was ready to go. I mean, you know, I mean, he beat up on everybody. There were days, there were days where you would walk into that studio first thing in the morning and Larry would say, watch, watch. I bet you I can make Tim leave before the show even starts. And sure enough, Within 10 minutes of the show starting, Larry would jab at him so hard, Tim would just slam his laptop and be like, I'm out. I can't do this anymore. And he would go home at 6.15 oh, yeah. in the morning. Like, yeah. and, this was, and this was constant. And again, obviously something was going on. It wasn't my business, but I know this is not what I signed up for. I don't come right. to work every day to get belittled and told I'm fat and told I'm stupid and told that I'm not good at my job and that I'm ruining the show. You know, it just, it got old. And then mm -hmm. about that time in 2012, I got a phone call uh, that they were flipping Dave FM to 92 on the game and they were looking for some producers. And they gave me a call and they said, hey, would you be interested in joining us? And I was like, 100%, yeah, make it happen. I was like, I don't care what you pay me, let's go. And they signed up. And I went in, I think it was like the day after Memorial Day, or maybe it was the day after Labor Day. And I basically said, told Rob Roberts, I said, look, I've accepted, because I wasn't on contract. I said, I've accepted another position in another station. I'll be more than happy to give you two weeks. I'll be more than happy to train somebody up. But Rob said, no, you know, you're good. You know, you, hey, thank you for your, your time and your service. And I said, can I walk around and say bye to everybody? And they gave me that. They didn't perp walk me. They didn't, you know, give me a box yeah. with a plant and my stuff. And so I got to walk around and give everybody a hug. Because I've been, been in that building with Susquehanna and then Cumulus for like 12 years. And so it's I long knew time. everybody. It's a long yeah. time. And, yeah. And so that the opportunity to do something different and nobody was happy on that show. And I think the ratings were starting to reflect that a little bit. And there was so much tension and Eric was ready to do his own thing. And Tim wasn't happy. And so it was, you know, again, I, I say that I said that I left for better opportunities, but it's almost like Larry pushed me to that, which looking back on it was the best thing that could have happened. Well, you were also a jock, uh, you know, as far as uh, you liked uh, sports radio. So I yeah. thought it was a good move, um, you know, and I'm, I'm fine with everybody over there. I hate it because they took a lot of good people, hardworking people. They took you. They took Deborah. They took our whole promotions department, which I thought the world of. And uh, it was it was really tough, um, you know, but I got it. People were going there and uh, they needed a. Uh, a new location with new energy and that was the place to go. Yeah. And it was just, it was the ability to do something new. I felt like my time with the regular guys was up, you know, I never wanted to be a regular guy. Like I never wanted to be a member, you know, it was the four of y'all mm -hmm. and y'all were perfect. And, you know, I was like, what else is there for me to do? You know, I, you know, I'm not getting, I love being mixed master Mark. I love it. I, I'm proud to have it on my resume. And again, I'll say it again, cause I, I don't want this just get construed. Larry was hard to work with. You know, and Larry oh. was kind of one of the deciding factors for me leaving. But I'll say it again, since then, you know, I follow him and I root for him. And I think he's doing, he's working in mortgage insurance now. I'm, I'm not, he sure is. I hope he makes yeah. a million dollars. I hope he is incredibly successful with that. And I love Sandra and I'm glad they're married. But back in 2012, that was not a good working environment. Yeah, I, I, I lived it. I know exactly what you're talking about. I had my issues, but you're the guest today, so we're talking about you. So we're not going to get into my crap. <laughs> oh, another six-hour show. Yeah, no doubt on, on the Yeah, Come On show. Uh, again, it's a, it's a pleasure having you on, Mark. Uh, you were always great to work with. I was happy for you. I rooted for you. Um, quickly, before we uh, turn you over to Brett, I do want to ask, when you left the game, what, what happened there? And tell people about your uh, experience with the Braves because – you took over a position that they came up with when they started going to radio people that at one point in time was held down by Jeff with uh, the Burt show. And then you took it. So let me know how you got out of the game and how the Braves thing worked, worked for you. So I was at the game for um, seven years and two, 
excuse me, that was a Cinco burp. Uh, there you go. Well, and as a matter of fact, we, we should all just take a, a sip real quick for you. Okay, everybody okay. take a drink. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Thanks, Mark. For those that thought we did the show live at 1 o'clock on Friday, thanks for totally fucking that up. I appreciate it. <laughs> to, the great, to the great sponsors that think we're live right now, we're not live. We're not live. My sponsors don't mind if we cuss. They know it's just a word. We don't cuss a whole lot on this show. Every once in a while, no. it's proper to let one out. Woo! Brett cusses more than I do. Uh, happy Cinco de Mayo, and uh, those of you listening to this, uh, yes, happy May 7th. Yes. Oh, yeah. Happy <laughs> Siete de Mayo. Doesn't okay, mean yeah. you can't drink with Cap us anyways. It's Friday. You can oh, drink yeah. with us anyways. It's Friday. Come on. Oh, yeah. It's Friday. Drink. So, drink. So, tell me. So, you leave the uh, game after oh, yeah, seven game. years. Yeah. Game was – I loved I had a great time working in sports world. You know, the biggest thing I learned working in sports radio is that everybody has an opinion, and yours is always wrong. It is the most opinionated radio you'll ever – but that's what made it fun. It's a lot of sure. testosterone. It's a lot of uh, 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 steak and beer and women and boobs. Uh, 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 but it's fun. But it's a, it's a great world to be in. Um, I got to host a show. I did a Georgia show with Georgia quarterback David Green, which, you know, me, I'm a big Georgia fan. That was bucket list for me. Like, I got to sit at Shula's Restaurant in, in Buckhead and talk Georgia football with freaking David Green. Like, you, Steve, you mentioned earlier, like, you get to have these great moments, like going on cruises and being treated. Like, that was a moment for me. And I was so proud to be part of that. Um, and then – we were owned by uh, CBS Radio and then got bought over by Intercom. And we got bought over. So CBS Radio is V103 and 92.9 in the game. Hold on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then when we got bought over by Intercom, Star 94 became part of the family as well. So those are the three okay. stations and WAOK, which is a, a talk station, an AM talk station. Well, I guess it was about, geez, about two years ago. Yeah, 2019 early 2019 when Jeff and Jen were hosting the morning show at Star 94 and mm -hmm. Jeff reached out and said, Hey, you know, we may be, we may want some help on the morning show. We need an executive producer and a third mic. Would you be interested? I'm like, well, I know Jeff, you know, I work with them. Obviously I work with Jen. We all work together on the bird show. Yeah. That would be great. I'd be honored to work with you guys again. And I don't mind doing mornings. I like mornings. So we started that conversation and in radio, as you know, Steve, you know, when they say two weeks, that's either a week or eight months. And yes. I was on the eight month part of it. So during all that time, while Jeff was trying to re kind of put the show together, just bring in some more, some fresh voices and some help, um, whatever was happening behind the scenes, they were planning on completely reformatting the show altogether without Jeff. So, oh. yeah. So and I long, take it Jeff had no idea. From what I understand, he was, yeah. He was blindsided. blindsided. Yeah. yeah. And you, you know, hate, you people, hate to hear that. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of people said, you know, uh, oh, Jen went behind Jeff's back and Jen screwed Jeff. And a lot of people said, Oh, Jeff screwed himself. It was his own fault. I'll tell you this much. I'm friends with both of them. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened to Jeff and Jen. I know talking to both of them, they each had their own private issues, not just with each other, but with the show and the direction of the show and they were trying to work those out together. But what led to his eventual release? I don't know. All I know yeah. is the then program director called me and said, all right, are you ready? I said, let's get go. And he said, here's what we're going to do. We're reformatting the morning show. It's going to be called Jen and Friends. It's going to be you and a guy named Curtis that we're bringing in from Myrtle Beach. And Jen Hobby is going to be the host and she's going to be the lead. I was like, oh, so no more Jeff. I said, nope. I found out that that they were releasing Jeff. I found out about 24 hours before it happened. They released him on a Thursday and we launched the new show on a Monday, which is disgustingly yeah. quick and mm. launched way too early. But anyway, so with all that being said, um, we launched the show. I thought it really, it was something different. You know, it was soccer mm -hmm. mom radio, but it had a chance to, to really be a player in Atlanta because you had at the time, the first female-led morning show in Atlanta radio history. Yeah, you've had your mm -hmm. Stephen Vickies, and you've had your Burt with his co-host, and, you know, uh, Gene and Julie, but you've never had a female-led. And then you had Curtis, the first openly gay black man on radio. He was a trip. And I thought that had they put a little time, effort, and energy into the show, we could have made some noise, and it could have been something historic. 
But I, I think that once COVID hit, everything was done because yeah. all radio stations lost so much money so fast. Intercom was looking to save as much money as possible. And I found out the day after Labor Day, we were just, we went on a big family vacation and we did the show on Tuesday. And then after the show Tuesday, I got a text from my program director, a, a gentleman by the name of Jerry. And he said, hey, call me. I'm in Rick Caffey's office. And Rick Caffey okay. is the head honcho at Intercom or Audible. What's it called now? Audacity or Audible? I don't even know, yeah. which they is horrible. So when he says I'm in Rick Caffey's <laughs> office, I knew right. I said, I'm about to get fired. Oh. And I, I called them and they said, hey, look, it's nothing personal. Intercom's doing a, a, a sweep of cuts across the country right now. Unfortunately, you're in it. Um, they said, we're dissolving the show. They dissolved my contract. But they were good to me, though. They gave me good severance. They let me keep my health care, my medical until the end of the year. They dissolved my no-compete. And, Steve, as you know, you know, no-competes can be huge. When, you know, in radio, you can't talk to anybody for six months if you have a no-compete. They dissolved that. So they were really good to me. So – for to get fired which sucked it was really the best way to get fired um, yeah they were pretty classy uh classy about it 96 rock uh you know i'd been there i you know they were actually in production rooms removing my voice off you know commercials and things and it was that it was it was basically a few between the regular guys i wouldn't go back to the regular guys they were on mornings at rock i wanted to stay in afternoons with Rhodes, and i basically you know Rhodes let out a couple of uncle fester and lurch jokes on the air and you know we were kind of said hey go go back and forth at each other from the gm and that didn't work out so you know we were the ones that got let go you know yeah. but little did we know they had plans you know nine ten months later to blow up the whole station so yeah. i was like ah, it didn't matter i'd have been gone anyway so it's almost like a blessing in the sky yeah, it is. Nobody likes to be let go, but I don't think you're in radio till you get let go. How many times um, have you been fired in radio? Just once, just the one time at 96 Rock in afternoons, Rhodes and I, and we were, you know, and I was making jokes, going around hugging people. I'd been in that building, like you're talking about, way too damn long, but I was escorted. <laughs> you got the perp walk. <laughs> I got perp walked out, uh, you know, and it was like, good God, you know, and the next thing you know, they walk you right down to your cars and they're like, Thank you, gentlemen. And they, they take all your, everything. I need, I need your key sticker card. Off. Yeah, they <laughs> took my card. That was in my car. Took my sticker. You know, and next thing you know, when you drive out of that parking garage, you can't get back in it, man. It's over. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, it that's was. Cool. It was. But, you well, know, it, I, it, I, I wondered what happened with you. Yeah, uh, I mean, look, I, it, it's, I was happy to say when you talk about chapters in radio, you know, I got to be a co-host of a morning show. And, that that, was that, and I was very happy for you, by the way. I didn't yeah. want to text. I didn't want to go into it till you got there. But when I heard of Jen and friends and knew you were on there, I was like, far out, dude. Yeah. Finally, you know, um, there's there's two people I always cheered for. Really, there's three. I, che I cheered for Matt Jones on the radio. Yeah. I cheered for you and I cheered for Deborah Green. Yeah. Um, yep. and, uh, those are people I wanted to see, get it. So dude, nobody can take that from you. Star 94 no. is a big signal and you were co-hosting a show. Congratulations. It man. was fun. It, you know, it almost getting let go kind of led me to the path that I'm at now. And, you know, I work with Barney over up at impact and it's, it, it was almost like a who's who of radio in Atlanta. And I mean, it, it, I still get to play radio. I still get to host radio shows. So I still get to, you know, scratch that itch, but it's, it's nice to not look over your shoulder every day and worry about that PD that's going to text you after you thought you had a good show. And you're like, damn, that was a good show. But the PD goes, nope, that was the worst show you've ever done. Son of a bitch. Or like a consultant who listens to one segment of the entire week, one five-minute segment, and then bases his entire opinion of the show on that one segment. And they don't, they're just saying whatever they think the PD wants to hear so they can keep their job. It's nice not having that cutthroat mentality every, anymore. So, I, you know, so where am I now? Still getting to do radio, you know, still getting to be creative as I want to be, work with a great group of people. So, you know, you talk about how, you know, paths lead you in certain directions. I'm in a good spot right now, and I'm happy, and I'm content, and I get to do Braves, and I'll answer Braves questions. So uh, this is my 15th season with the Atlanta Braves. Are you walking around? Are you walking around on the microphone and doing that kind of stuff still? Or are you doing something else? Nope, still doing the same thing. Still doing the in-game hosting. Still doing the. Uh, so it's a little bit different in the COVID year. Um, 
So, uh, but uh, you know, like beat the freeze and the tool race and the trivia and, and all that stuff. Um, still That's doing fun. That. Yeah, I, I love it. Now the freeze and the Home Depot tool race, we can't do that on the field because of COVID. But um, yeah, it'll be back eventually. Hopefully by the middle of the summer, it should be back. I heard that Adam Baum got hired by the Braves. What is he doing? You know, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, I saw him post it on there that he's working with the Braves. I'm like, great, dude, he's quality. And I reached out to my people in my department, and I said, hey, man, this is cool, man. You know, what's, what's Baum going to be doing? Everyone was like, who? I'm like, Adam Baum, the afternoon guy at Q100? And they were like, like two of the people that I work with directly in the fan experience department, they're like, we don't know who that is. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Right. So I, I don't – look, if, if he's taking my job, good on him. You know, uh, I, <laughs> hope I, didn't have, I really hope I didn't have to find out via Facebook because that would really suck. You know, my 15th year and two home stands in, and they're like, yeah, Mark. Because listen, it's going to happen, Steve. They're going to look up one of these days, and they're going to say, holy shit, man. Mark's 42. He's about 40 pounds overweight, got a gray beard, bald head. Dude, we can find a 25-year-old that does CrossFit twice a day with a full head of hair and pay him half. Like, it's going to happen. So, but I'll be honest, that's what a lot of people expect, and those dudes aren't always as good. There's something about tenure and something about, you know, hey, look at you. You look like uh, Jeff's little son. I mean, he was bigger than you are, so I don't no, think size I, matters. I, no, you know what I look like? I, I look like a fan because I okay. am a fan. And I think that's well, one of the reasons I've been able to hold this position for so long is because, yes. like you, I was born and raised a Braves fan. So when they're getting their ass kicked and they throw it to me, I'm not going to be all like, oh, everybody, let's still have some fun here. No, I'm like, well, shit, this sucks. Hey, Steve, listen, man, let's play nap tap shuffle. Let's try to have some fun here. Let's let, Hopefully you'll have more success right now than the Braves. So I'm a fan at the end of the day. So when the fans are pissed, I'm pissed. When they're happy, I'm happy. So that's hard to find with a lot of the positions, those, you know, the in-game hosts and the people that do what I no. do for other organizations. Well, you're, you're right. And, and loyalty and people that stick with you and recognize a product are uh, few and far between a lot of times. So once again, I want to thank Circle285.com, OxygenFinancial.com, and Ridgeline Counseling with Dr. Dave Markwell. Right now, we've reached the point in time in the Yet Come On Show where I turn it over to Mr. Brett Barney, who is a co-worker, a co-worker of Mixmaster Mark. So tell us can how I, you guys... Say, Steve, Steve, can I just say real quick, we've known each other for like 15, you know, 15 years now. Yeah. And it took me working with Barney for six months for me to finally get on your show. So the hell, man. Five months. Oh no, I've only been at the company for five months. Five Granted, months. You did sit two cubes. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you know Southside got me this job. He got he got you the job. Yeah. My man. Uh, you know I, and this is the thing that kills me. There's 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 people that light me up every once in a while. I don't get it as much. There's some jackass on the radio and I, I hope I, not to hurt this dude's feelings, but I really don't care. But he calls, he calls a uh, hashtag divorce 2021. Like, you know, Amanda and I are going to get divorced and then he came hashtag, on the podcast. Yeah. And then hashtag 2020. So the dude just lights me up, but I read these things, you know, and like you take one bag picture and people want to act like you're old, but you called me that too. Our records speak for themselves. The lips still work. The memories are still there. And I still do crazy shit, even with kids. So, you know, it's just life changes. Um, and I'm just glad we're all still working, but I don't know exactly what you guys do. And <laughs> So if y'all okay. want to tell me what neither you guys do, we. do, don't worry. Neither do we. Okay. I just fake it. And by, and by right. the way, I had, I had hashtag divorce 2020. So I lost that bet. So you son <laughs> of a bitch. I can't. Yeah. I got to tell you, man, I told everybody, if I ever get married, I'm not going to cheat on her. I'm not going to do it. It'll be for life. And then Good I have two you. kids. I have two kids, <laughs> you know, but girlfriends, you know, that's BS. That's called playing house and dating. Yeah, I dated three girls at the same time. I had no morals. I'd run them out the back door, front door. I didn't care. But I wasn't saying I love you to anybody. That's the key. Well, you know what? I'm glad you had some kind of standards. I did. I did. <laughs> I'm like, I only said I love you to the first girl I had sex with and the last one. Everybody in between, I had a great time. Thank you. And by the way, and Steve's also like, listen, I'm married. I got kids. I'm kind of tired, even though you think it's one o'clock on a Friday. It's actually 930 on a Wednesday and I'm exhausted. So listen, don't you judge me. Don't you judge me, damn it. I, 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 I got to finish, finish this little uh, mason jar um, tequila. By the way, I'm teaching God, my son to ride a bike. Us. 
I'm on a Lightning McQueen bicycle. I was out there. It's got the training wheels. My wife called them something else. She called them standard uh, keeper uppers or something. She had some nice word for, I'm like, they're training wheels. Is that but, a, yeah. like the crisscross applesauce instead of Indian style? Yeah. Well, so, something silly. How was is like, training wheels? Traction. No, not traction bars. It's 2021, standard. Mark. We can't say training wheels. Okay. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Right, Cheers. Upper keeper, yeah, keeper upper Good Lord. Damn. Woo. <laughs> There's a little bit of burn on that one. Maybe I drank too much. Hello. What time does your alarm go off now, Steve? Do y'all do like now it goes off at uh, five. So do y'all do how? Do, what's the format of Southside and Bailey? Um, like early in the mornings. Like do y'all do like a replay at six or get live? At no, six? we do a replay at uh, five forty-five, and then we come on live at six and go to ten. Uh, Axel came in, and uh, you know, I thought he made a good call. Uh, you know, morning shows, you know, try to be the end all, end all. But I believe in supporting a radio station, you know, and I want Rock one hundred point five to be successful, and I want Lindsay and Axel and you know the entire staff, in, including. Uh, the heater, Jackson Heaton. <laughs> One at night, I almost forgot him. He you mean Jamaica him. Jackson? I support, I support everybody on that show, including that dude and that chick and that other well, chick and that other dude. Yeah, I know. I'm horrible. You know, what the hell? My son does it too. I'm like, so who's in your class? He goes, that boy, that girl, <laughs> that kid. And he'll say, that kid. I'm like, he's got a name, dude. Is Brandy still with you guys? Yeah, Brandy. Uh, I uh, yeah. Brandy I feel bad runs. For her because when I quit, she had to step in and take over because Bre- uh, Deborah did it for a minute, and then Brandy took over. And she used to text me all for the first six months after I was gone, you know. And I wanted to help her out. Like I never, my intention was never to leave anybody high and dry. I wanted to train, but Rob Roberts would let me or didn't want me to, so she just had to jump in. So I'm like, hey, this file is here, this sound effects here. Good luck doing regular guy squares, you know. But and then there were days she was like, how do you do it? Larry just keeps yelling at me. Oh, I know. Yeah, it was brutal. She's still running the board. Same position. Brandy's there. Uh, we have, uh, you know, myself and Bailey. Then we've got uh, one of Bailey's friends who, you know, our friend now, um, and that's Nate. Uh, did you dude Nate? And uh, then we've got a girl named Nikki D screening the phones. So nice. those, that's well, tell the show. Brandy, tell Brandy I said, hey, I love her. She is, she is quality. And I'm glad that she's still there. Yeah, no, I sure will. You got it. Done deal. Uh, so right now, I guess Brett Barney, take it away. And I uh, can't wait to to uh, see where this goes or maybe know more about what you and Mark do. <laughs> My God, I have, <laughs> I have no He's idea. So He's so ready to wrap up this podcast. He's so ready to be done with it. Dude, uh, I'm just blown away by how many times our paths have all crossed with like Steve talking about 1067. And that's where I spent most of my career. Mark, you were across the hall from us, and I didn't even really know you because you were running TRG on, on the bone or whatever the hell rock was at the time that flipped the million names. Yeah. And then I actually interviewed for 92.9 to be an overnight executive producer. Didn't get the gig, thank God. But you were actually in the studio across from me when I was doing my interview because I saw you in there and didn't really meet you or know you until now. Um, that, hey, by the way, had you got the overnight job, you probably would have been fired because now overnights is just syndicated from like 11 to 6. Yeah, that Damn. was honestly Damn. my guess when they were discussing it with me. And Brandy and I, when I first started, we were the only two that would run the entire stations, all the stations at night on Saturday night because I was wow. 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. So it was just her running rock and I was on kicks. Dude, there was like so. <laughs> 160 years of radio between the three of us. <laughs> no, and that's all Steve. Of that comes from Steve. Yes, <laughs> dicks, dicks. Hi, okay. it's Southside Steve and the two dicks. <laughs> let's uh, let's get this hey, started. They're, they're playing up at uh, Thirty Seven Main this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jen and Friends the worst name for a morning show of all time in Atlanta? Uh, no, uh, Don Miller Morning Show was. Hmm. Mm. Oh no, moderate, almost alliteration there. When I heard Jen and Friends, I'm like Jen and who? Mm. I mean, Wait, I have no recognition. Me, so you, are you asking me a question for my answer or so you can give your opinion? No, it's like sports radio. No matter what your opinion is, it's wrong. You Good told point. me that right, Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, By the way, ahead. if you think sports radio opinion and, like, it's my opinion, your opinion's wrong, go work in political radio. Oh, cool. Exact same way. Oh, no. Ooh, that'd be tough. No, no way. <laughs> okay, sorry, go ahead. Uh, 
Mark, what's the best Mexican restaurant in Atlanta? Uh, any Mexican restaurant that has cold beer and hot cheese dip. So it's I not love, Nuevo Laredo? No, screw that. Nuevo Laredo is so overrated. It's a good Mexican restaurant, but it's not the best ever. Everyone's like, it always keeps winning, like, the best of Atlanta. Yes, it's good, but it's no different. I love a good, dirty Mexican restaurant that you find in, like, the Kroger Shopping Center. Because What was the one – hey, what was the one off of two, uh, uh, 85 um, North where you're going up 85 and it's right there on the hill, right there at North Druid Hills? What was that one? It's still there, I think. Ponchos? Oh, Is it Ponchos? Ponchos, and they have Ponchos. the fish yes. bowls. I used yes. to live yes. next to it. It's next to the shooting range where I watched a guy pick up. They have a bunch of hookers that hang out front. Yeah, I'd go Ponchos over uh, yeah. Rado, and I've you eaten see, both. So I like the Rado. Rado doesn't feel – it feels like a restaurant. It feels like you go in and you mm-hmm. eat, it's good, and then you leave. I like it to be a little more, like, fun, laid back. There's, you know, there's room to move around. Nuevo's tight, and you sit oh. down, and you eat your food. And you take, I want to go to a bar and have a margarita and relax and enjoy – Again, the rail is not bad, but we got a little Monterey by us up here in Smyrna, yeah. and it's perfect. It's got listen, you know I'm, you know I'm, why I, I don't like Nuevo Laredo, whatever I always get the name screwed up. Is because if you get taken down to the basement to eat and there's a fire, you're never getting out. <laughs> Good point. That is a great. How's the fire never getting out? That's true. That's I've true. never even thought of that, and that's the only room in that place I've ever eaten in is the basement. <laughs> Never so, getting out. Had you got the job at 92 on the game, you'd be fired. And had you there been a fire broken out at Nuevo, you'd be dead. Yes. Bingo. But it's really convenient if I go to Top Golf. True. True. Which is like the driving range. It's the bowling alley of driving ranges for people who don't play golf. That's also mm-hmm. very true. Have you yes. ever played golf at Legacy? Yes. Yeah, two weeks ago. True. Amateur. All right, sir, go ahead. <laughs> 99 next, the Burt Show, the regular guys, the game, star. Which one did you look forward to going to work the most at? Uh, the Bird Show, because I was single at the time, and working for the Bird Show when I was single and in much better shape and had hair was like shooting fish in a barrel. Golf, Golf clap. clap, way to go! <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, look, I'm not. I mean, I know that sounds rude and I know that sounds mean, but when you were a, if you were a single guy. And you worked for the Burt Show, and then you went to Vision on a Saturday night, and I dropped because my character's name was Phil Tarana, and I said, "Hey, I'm Phil from the Burt Show." I mean, it's like saying I'm Southside Steve at AMS. I mean, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I ran down as much heat in Buckhead as I did on the South Side or the North Side, but I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I just, I, and plus, on top of that, it was. And I will say, outside of that, I mean, it was good. I learned a lot. Say what you will yeah. about Bert. Bert taught me so – he taught me a work ethic that, you know, I'll, I'll, I hope to pass on to my daughter. And, like, you know, anybody I work with, I hope they, they get a work ethic too because they, my grandmother literally died when I was working for the Bert Show. During her wake, Bert was sending me texts saying, hey, can you come back? I need you to pull this audio. I, need you. I had to leave my grandmother's viewing – to go pull audio for the next day's show. And I did it. That's my own fault. I did it. But he really, working for the Bird Show, you would get there as a assistant producer. I would get there at 4 a.m. and I would leave at 4 p.m. And I have no regrets. Ah, but brutal, the parties, dude. but again, I was in my early 20s. I had nothing but time, effort, energy. And then no, I, got, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. You know those days. And then oh, on yeah. the weekends, we get VIP to go to Tongue and Groove and 1150 and Vision and Compound. Back in the mid two thousands, that was those were the days. Mm-hmm. All right, sorry. Oh, compound, that's great. Why will UGA never win a national championship in football? Are y'all still there? <laughs> he took it better than I thought he would. I, are y'all break? Is your Wi Fi? My, my mic's did, still working. Did, did Zoom? Time us out. What happened? No, we're 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 good. I tell you what, I'm counting I'm counting two behind you. Oh yeah, that's it. I listen. You know me. I'm a homer. Like every year's our year. Like when people give me shit about being a Georgia fan and, and Alabama being so good and Clemson and everything, I'm like, you're right. I mean, I can't argue. Like every year is our year. Listen, I'm that guy that we could lose to Vandy and then lose to South Carolina and then lose to Kentucky. But that next home game, I'm in the front row of Sanford Stadium going, we're number one. Like, yeah. Like, if you, you know who, you know who loves it? Buck. He won't admit it. And I like teasing him. He told me I'm the only tech fan he likes. 
Uh, but um, Buck and Kincaid, you know, when they were a thing, you know, John's now um, back up in, uh, you know, his hometown. Philly, but and he's killing Philly. it, too. He is. No, he's doing great. We had him on the uh, Come On show. Sorry. You know, we did ahead of you. Uh, not my fault. You I blame had Ali on before you had me. And if I hadn't have asked Brett, I still wouldn't be here. Look, I didn't True. even know you worked with him. He kept it a secret. I don't know what his problem is. My but I will tell you. Dick. You're on now, and you know what? You can be on any time you want, Mark. You're you're homered in. But look at but look at somebody like Buck though that's made a career quarterback for the national champion UGA football team in 1980, and there hasn't been another national championship. The dude is still a hero. Still has a billboard on your way. I mean, I think he wants them to win more than anybody, and doesn't ask for them not to. But boy, it sure works for him. No, he doesn't. No, I I. I, I I got to think there's a part in the back of his head that's like, boy, I hope they don't win anytime soon. Yeah, seriously. So to answer your question, I don't know. (laughs) Now that you're bald, would you paint a bulldog on top of your head? No, because I sweat too much and it would run off. That's bad paint, dog. And what is this now that I'm bald? I've been bald for like 10 years. I don't know. You said earlier that you knew Steve when you had hair. Yeah, that was 10 years ago. Okay. It was well, actually, I can tell you when. So you've you lacked exactly painting a bulldog started, on your head for 10 years. No, I, I can tell you when I started shaving my head is at my wedding, which I just celebrated 10 years, that I got the pictures back, and it looked like I still had a little bit of hair. I was trying to hang on to, like, the Clooney cut, you know, the Caesar cut. Yeah. And I got the pictures back from us standing at the front, and it looked like I had a flesh-colored yarmulke on. And I, I remember looking at my dad, who was my best man, and I was like, Dad, man, you got to tell me these things. He was like, son, you look fine to me. I'm like, well, because you're bald, so you don't see it. Yeah. What the hell? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Hey, hey I'm you, good. Hey, let's work. You're good. You look great. You got a good-looking head. Don't you have a Georgia tattoo as well? Right here. There you go. Did you know that Georgia. everything's better and better? Better Georgia? Can you see that? I see it. I see I'm it. I'm wearing working. my Hawks shirt because I just found out we're in the playoffs. I thought it would be kind of cool. Are we? Yeah, dude. I thought we were just seated. We, okay. Somebody said we're in the playoffs, and we ran with it yesterday. I don't even know if it's true. I hope it's true. Okay. <laughs> Is this one of those, it's 2021, everybody wins? <laughs> I guess. Like, everybody gets a ribbon. Everyone gets a trophy. Hawks are in the playoffs. Participation trophy. Well, NBA is the most guilty of, I mean, their postseason lasts for, you know, three Ever. months. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long time. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead next. Okay, I'll just fire on. I'm going to go into Braves. So, uh, right, if look, I do you go step... rapid fire. Here, we'll go. Let's go rapid fire. Let's go. All right. Working for the Braves has a fan from another fan base, not Braves, obviously away team, ever tried to start something with you during a game? Yes, Yankees fans. Hmm. Yankees, really? fans uh, Yankees fans are always the worst about heckling me about putting them on the big screen, and they can't understand why. And I have to look at them every time, and I say, my man, you're in a Braves game, and you're in a Yankees jersey. And they can't quite fathom that. They're like, and your point? I'm like, because we're in a Braves game. Yes, Yankees fans. Do you feel as though you would have gotten a gig if your name didn't rhyme with Park? <laughs> I had a girlfriend once who said that she said my name so much, her mom said it sounded like she, she sounded like a hair-lipped dog. Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark, Mark, Mark. That's crazy. Right. I'm sorry, man. I have to ask the I have to ask the hard hitting um, questions. I, I would I would hope it would be, I would hope it would be my talent, not my name. But you could have a really good point. That's right. Wait, his name is Frank. Did you get the oh. chance? Cheers. Are we going another? Come on, I think Mark's out. I can Let's go. Mm. Wait. Hold on, can you can you hold on? Hold on, sixty seconds. Hang on, one second. Uh, Steve, sixty seconds. That's a long time. Hey, Steve, let's talk. Sixty seconds. How was your son's birthday? It was fantastic, man. We got him out. I got a sunburn. I was like, did I not put on sunscreen? I think I sweated it off. Um, but no, the kids showed up. They had a blast. Brooks a couple times took all the kids in the house, which was a no no to show him his room. And I got like kids in every bathroom, every room. And I'm trying to get them out. But he loved it, and here's the saddest thing. He cried when they uh, took down the inflatable. He thought it was his. By the and way, that inflatable was insanely, uh, I would say, sick, nice, awesome, amazing. I don't know what word it was you good. want to pick. It was really cool. I saw the Instagram. By the way, if you want to follow us at the Yeah Come On Show on Instagram as well as Twitter, 
You can send us an email, yakamonshow at gmail.com. And I would, I do have the phone number in my phone to make sure that I I'm say following the yet. Yeah, come on. Every show time. Six, Thank seven, you. eight, six, nine, three, 22, 69. Again, that's six, seven, eight, six. Yeah, boy. That's yeah, the boy. phone number. If you want to text us, send us a video. You want to leave us a voicemail, hit us up anytime you would like to, I don't know who cares. That was terrible. You was did good. You sold, you sold that. <laughs> I think there are people going to follow us. I think there's people – seriously, man, send us videos. We'll love posting videos. I like any video where somebody's getting hurt but doesn't die and uh, and says, yeah, come on in the video. That's great. Like, yeah, come on, and then they hit a tree with their bicycle. That's fantastic stuff. What if they say, yeah, come on, as they're falling off the cliff? Like, yeah, come on. Would that count? No, we don't play anything where somebody dies. Good no. answer. We're, we're, we're a non-dying show. We're here to live. The only – every. Know. I just followed the Yet Come On show on Instagram, and the very first picture I see is Vinny Bucci. How was that son of a bitch? He's doing okay. He ate a car. Tried to. He ate oh, half a car, God. and his doctor told him to stop. He's still all about wrestling. He still lives at home. Uh, he did leave Home Depot for Lowe's uh, and dropped, uh, the, the, dropped the wrench, so to speak, and walked out the door. So those are the things going on with him. Not dating anyone at the moment. Uh, still doing a little bit of comedy. Good. By the way, so I just ran out into – I know I said 60 seconds, and I was back real quick. I tell my wife 60 seconds all the time, and it's like that. But I, I also got me some legends. Nice. Did you buy yours? Because we bought ours. Some some people out there think I have an endorsement that I do not seconds. have. 60 seconds. <laughs> no. Um, uh. I Actually, no, I will say, Chris, when he first launched – uh, legends he did send me a little gift pack and gave me a couple of um he sent me one too and i had the bottles he just wanted us to try it i'm like i got that dude drunk at my bar a couple of times free he and, owed me <laughs> and i really enjoyed uh, the legends he, by the way he had a um he had an event a couple of months ago at the distillery and we mm -hmm. went down there to check it out and i spent about 100 bucks on on uh got like a hat and got a mask and got a um you know i got a couple of bottles too so yeah legends is strong I just grabbed, because I literally just ran to my, my liquor bar downstairs and grabbed the first thing, and it's vodka. So I went from straight tequila to vodka. I don't know how tonight's going to end. I don't either, but I will tell you, uh, my wife actually signs off on Legends Vodka. She does not get the hangover. I know Sky Vodka for years said that you couldn't get it with theirs. Certain vodkas claim that, but you don't get one with Legends, so that's good. But what, if, what if you shoot it? I don't, can you, I don't shoot. Oh, you can. I, dude, I drink it straight. I've no, he's got yeah, vodka, got though. What, if, what about vodka? Can you shoot vodka? Oh, yeah. Uh, the vodkas. I did it, uh, what, a month or so ago on the show. I turned one up. Yeah, but Brett also good. owns a butt plug, so don't do what Brett does. Only three of them. I know. Okay, it's, my Iverson, it's my Iversons. Are we going to uh, Legends? Uh, yeah. Hey, yeah, we're we're drinking again. Legends. I've already had two shots while we were talking. Okay, oh, well, now geez. it's about to be three. All right, we're going Damn. Legends. I'm, I'm doing All that right, 115 weeded, baby. Boy, hey, by the uh, way, Chris, this this at least gets us another bottle, right? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, so now that we found out your name is Rhymes with Park and that got you your gig. <laughs> don't shoot vodka. <laughs> no, don't shoot vodka. I've done it. Oh, God. Chris, I love you. And I love, I, I don't mind. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Hey, Brett, I'm going to be late tomorrow. <laughs> Tell the boss. So keep, worry, do, do some rapid fire questions. We got oh, no, to be boss. in like an hour early tomorrow, too. You, uh, you know our boss. You know Mike Macho. Macho's your boss? That's our boss. He's awesome. I Macho. love that guy is my huckleberry. That guy was so positive to me. I loved working with him. I only got to work with him for a year, but he gets it. Dude, I like he, Mike. Let me tell you something. Uh, I, he's one of those guys, and, and Brett, this is how the radio world works. I've known Macho for 20 years, and then when I got released from Star, Grant McCauley helped put me in contact with Mike. And when Mike called me the first time, he was like, Owens, Grant gave me your number, and when I was putting your number in, it popped up automatically. I didn't know, but I've had your number for like 20 years now, and that's how far we go back. But I'll tell you, man, Macho is the real deal. The guy is a yeah. hustler. And, dude, just a super positive dude to work for. And he makes that job to where I had to close the book on radio, terrestrial radio, FM radio, morning show radio, 
and move into this new, it's a little bit more of a corporate job. You still get to be creative. You still get to be wild and have fun. But it is, Brett can tell you, it's, it's a corp, it's a nine to five. And it's, but it's awesome. But he made that transition and he made this new position so much fun. And just, he helped me adapt to it so well. So again, I always, I'll always have, you know, room in my book for, for Mike Macho. He's a good dude. Oh, that's great, man. Good deal. And if we want to wrap this all up, he was my first boss when I was 22. All right, let's keep going. Radio is such a small world. (laughs) It is. It is. And you know what? And I hope anybody listening, you know, to the podcast, and of course you can see us if you go to YouTube, which is how I like to view things, but don't do it while you drive. Are we on YouTube? Are we on the YouTube right now? Not right not now. now. We, it will we be will be play the yet yeah, come on show. Oh God. <laughs> no, and now we're gonna no. All right. I'm gonna oh, rapid fire some funny. of these. <laughs> Let's keep going. Mark, have you ever messed up while on the Jumbotron? And which one stands out to you the most? Oof. Uh me- uh messed up. I caught it at Turner Field and we were at Truist. Um uh, but I caught myself and I called myself out on it too in front of about forty thousand people. I said, All right, hope you're having a good Friday night here at Turner. Nope. It is now SunTrust Park. Um, messed up. Uh, no, I've never – I've had a guy cuss before. I've had a guy kiss me before because he won a game. Um, I had a girl get really, really excited and jump up and down. Her, her sundress came up a little too high. Um, but as far as, like, me messing up, I've never cussed or anything, no. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? Which That's tool, good. That's good. Which tool is your favorite tool? And there's only one the answer. Because he gets his ass no. kicked every single night. No. You know why? No. He, that son of a gun. Let me tell you. Okay, you want some behind the scenes of the Home Depot tools? So those cats in those Home Depot tools costumes, they get their ass kicked every single night. Their goal is to go out there and entertain the crowd. If it was just a boring race where they were literally trying to win, who? that's not fun. The goal is the pushing and the shoving and knocking each other down. There was one, I think it was two bit a couple years ago. We're still at Turner Field. He broke his ankle. He got thrown down so hard and got tangled up. They carried him off the field. And of course, me, and I'm like, well, two bit, man, had a rough night. He's having to get carried off the field. All right, good luck, two bit. Good luck, get it. And then, like, five minutes later, we're like, holy hell, dude in there, I forgot whatever his name is, Steve. Steve just broke his ankle. We're like, oh, damn. But the other, so. If something like that happens, of course, they're employees that are inside of the costumes. They sign all these waivers and everything. They were scared to death. The Braves were like, geez, man, I hope we don't get in trouble. I hope he doesn't, like, try to sue us. He took it as a badge of honor. He was so excited. He's like, I broke my ankle in the tool race. He was so <laughs> proud of that to happen. That's funny. Hey, fill the uh, bucket all the way. Uh, fill the bucket always wins. No, no fill the bucket one year didn't have a single win until the last game of the season. And that was when I started following him on Twitter. That is, that is not true. That is 100%. You're thinking of two bit the drill. Really? Are you going to, are you going to go by what you say when you're drunk at a game or the guy that's worked there for 15 years and calls every single tool race? I promise you fill the bucket. Wins. I'm going with you, dude. I'm going with you. Sorry, fill Brett. You, you are thinking, no, you're right. You're thinking of two bit the drill. Two bit no, the drill. Fill the, bucket. fill the buckets. My guy all day. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying that, that you're, you said that Phil lost all year until the last game. That's two bit. Two bit loses all year, and then traditionally he wins the last game. <laughs> Ooh, so just if, in case anybody's in Vegas for the last <laughs> game. All right, I have to ask you this. Okay. It's a really random question. If you were going to try and beat the freeze, how big of a head start would you need in order to beat the actual freeze? Okay. So let's say this is the finish line. I'd have to be here when they release the first. <laughs> I know my limitations. Hey, you want to hear something? dude secret? is moving. Has he ever – I know he has, but has he ever been beaten? He has to have, oh, yeah. right? He probably gets beat probably every fifth race, sixth race. Okay. So yeah. here's a yeah. – here's a, um, you want a little behind-the-scenes info about how we pick contestants and everything? So for B- – What do you ask him? How fast can you run the 100? <laughs> Can you go viral? If you can go viral, we'd really like you to play this game. Um, so people, that's one of the biggest questions I get working for Braves is, how do I become, how do I beat the freeze? How do I play a trivia game? It really is, I'm no lie, it is 100% at random. Um, they just look for fans to be in Braves gear and be sober. And, and really, that's it. I mean, other Damn. than that, it's like right place, right. And they, 
a lot of it too is like if we're giving away like a Dan Tana's gift card, they want the contestant to be over 21 so they can come and eat and drink and stuff like that. Or if we're giving away six flags, then yeah, you want you can have a kid. Now with the freeze, they look for someone who is in tennis shoes and looks to make it competitive. That's why they're never going to see somebody like me up there or somebody like Brett up there because we couldn't beat the freeze. Oh, don't you cock your head. You couldn't beat the freeze. I don't know. Like 14 years ago, I ran like what, like a 4 8 5 40? But 14, I'm like a 5 6 minute. How old were you 14 years ago? 18. How old were you 14 years ago, Steve? 51. 42. <laughs> 14 years ago, I was 44. Steve's checking his email, though. He's ready to wrap this thing up. All right, sorry. No, no. I was actually – I just got sent a nudie from, from Brett. I was just looking at it. It's my wife. Crap. I got to scrap that because she listens to this show. <laughs> just let it go. I do have one last question, by the way. What do you got, Mark? Fire one off. <laughs> If you want to keep going, on. Mark, on that. Hold on, hold on. Let me, text, let me text Brett real quick. I'm waiting. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I want Mark on more. I want Mark on more. I'm enjoying it. You actually right. text me. Thank <laughs> you. Of course he did. Hey, you know what's going to happen tomorrow when I see Brett at work? He's going to say, like, hey, dude, thanks. I'll be like, shut up. We don't talk about it. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Never up. happened. Never happened. Oh, is he? That's funny. No. Dude, the funny no thing way. is I was like, yeah, I'm not really going to drink on this podcast because I'm sure everyone we work with is possibly going to watch this. Because I had but people coming up okay, to me being like, I saw Ali Mack was on y'all show. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm just sending messages. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. I literally, I literally Mark, started. welcome to the Yakima yeah, Show. <laughs> Holy shit, you really did just send it to us. Yeah, I did. There Look, you go. That's what he did. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord. See, okay. that, this, this, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we did, hey, Brett, we really did. When I, when I say the first three years of the regular guys was real, it was a so much fun. It was, uh, it was a blast. Regular guys, I still to this day, regular guys squares was the hardest game to run. Because there were so many elements at the same time, it's like the board up trying to hit all the music and sound effects. But damn, it was fun. Is that hey, when did you, you had, uh, Tim Andrews pretended to be all the different people? Tim he, did. Steve had voices. Yeah. Larry had voices. <clears throat> hey, uh, see, and we see. had we had the Kimmer on our station, and Tim probably does the best Kimmer yep. outside of Kimmer. He did. And then you guys would rip us, and I would show up to work every morning, and everyone would be like this. <laughs> regular, regu regular guys are calling us the fat station again. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's right. Dude, we called they out. Would, they would call us the fat station. That's so true. And, and to be honest, like everybody at our station hated you guys. Y'all are like ten feet away from us. Mm -hmm. Outside of everybody loves Steve because Jackie loves Steve, and Jackie was our boss. So we were just like, Steve's the man. Look, hey, that Steph, was cool. I didn't rip you. I didn't rip. I didn't rip you guys. They talked no, about that was Eric. Eric. Eric always called me that. Do you, have you listened to Eric on uh, SB? On not yeah, not. I have actually. Yeah, I've listened to him. I listened to him. I used to listen to him on the way home when you know before the pandemic because he's on from nine to uh, noon. Nine to on noon SB. now. Yeah. 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 It's, so it's, I listen to him. It's it's every intern we used to have on the radio station works with him. I like it's it's a great show. It's too uh, the cast and I love Tim. I'm a big fan of Tim. I still text with Tim all the time. I'm a big fan of Tim. I never met Autumn, but she makes me laugh. The only the only thing about that show that drives me crazy is his producer Jared has way too much real estate. Like it's a it's a, that's a you know 95.5 is for the adult male you know uh, you know whatever whatever 35 plus. I don't need to hear Jared talking about an EDM festival drinking White Claws all the time. But I'm. I, like that's the only. I wish that that would get air checked. I'm sure he's a nice kid, but man, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for. for Eric. No, everybody. Yeah, I'm happy for Eric too. That's 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 great, and all all the people working for him. That's way way cool. Did, but uh, wait, are you friends with Are you friends with Jared Farm? I am not. I don't. I've met I don't know Jared, him. I met Jared once. It was going into uh, Super Bowl 
here in Atlanta to go get our yeah. media badges. And I was running the Shannon Burke <clears throat> show and we were going up against Eric and he would talk a lot of shit about us. So we would ah. vice versa about him. And they yeah. were coming out as we were coming in and Eric saw Shannon, me and Kara. And he's like, Shannon. And they just like broed out for a minute. And we are just like, what y'all like go to the strip club last weekend and buy each other lap dances or like y'all are acting hmm. like best friends and we just hammer each other all the time and uh radio. yeah well it's radio exactly yeah, but that's I, how it is but you know, i do the love only the reason air- i was giving faces because uh as you said about jared i mean i was that guy on shannon's show right but well the but i think the difference is i think eric lets it happen like when i say that like that i you know eric has always been very you know, anti-PD, anti-air checks, anti-radio station culture. But I, what anti-phone I anti-phone calls, live yeah, phone calls. Yeah, but what I don't think Eric realizes is that sometimes his show sounds like a morning zoo with all the sound effects and all the silly topics. And, you know, they'll get talking about like EDM festivals, some of that, like, like for someone who's so anti, you know, checking yourself, sometimes you need to check yourself because you're on WSB. Like, I, I don't, I don't want, I want to hear one thing I loved about Eric and Steve, I think you're probably the same way. I loved Eric's and I still do his politics. He is, mm-hmm. is right down the middle as you get. He didn't like Trump. He doesn't like Biden. He rides the middle and his, his rants are great. His thoughts are great, but he's, he surrounds himself with a good cast, but he has a producer that tries to make the show about him too much. And after, that's where I think, Eric should air check the show and be like, all right, we need to pull back a little bit and let it be less Eric and Jared show and more Eric Von Hessler. That's just my Mm -hmm. opinion. You know, be as it may, they're doing, their ratings are great. So what do I know? Hell, I got fired from radio, so I don't know. Did you listen to one (laughs) five minute segment and become a consultant? I'll go and wave. I'll I'll listen to the Von Hessler doctor, uh, doctor podcast. I'll listen Hey, Braves won on Wednesday, but you listen to this on Friday. So uh, go Braves. They take on the Phillies tonight. Um, yeah, 14 and 16. Uh, so I'll listen. I'll go for about a week and listen to all the podcasts. And then I'll just get frustrated because I want to hear a good Eric thought on, you know, the stimulus package or the voting bill or Biden. But it gets derailed too quickly by a guy that wants to talk about, you know, a pontoon boat on Lake Lanier. And then Eric gives him that, that real estate. So, you know, again, what do I know? Yeah. That's All tough. Right, yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So I always wrap it up with one last question. That's just going to be completely random. Then Steve, I do have something that we need to throw out there after that, just for you. But my last question is about this. I had this idea the other day and it's kind of from Brett's brain that what if we created, this is my million dollar idea, possibly billion dollar idea. I mean, you call I like it, it, you know, Brett Bezos, Edible Play-Doh. Like, what if we made Play-Doh that you could eat? No, uh, okay, first off, you can eat Play-Doh because I ate it like three years ago, I think, or four years ago. That was the last time I ate Play-Doh. It was really salty. It tastes like shit. But, like, what if it was flavored? Well, it's, would it you spoil? Give it to, you give it you don't want kids. it to spoil if no, it's, it's edible. No, it's the same thing, but it's blueberry flavored. If it's blue, it's strawberry flavored. And they eat the product guess what they have to do next purchase more okay there's something on the table with what you're saying my son does play with play-doh i've told him not to put it in his mouth and he's actually listened to me i just don't know if it's edible then if a kid gets sick then you're you're done and plus there's something about his hands being all over like they play with it like think about when you pick up Brett, you don't have kids, but Steve, what, pick up like a carrot, but you don't, you use chopsticks, right? When you pick up a taco, you use a fork, you know, no, you use your hands, right? That's don't what I'm argue saying. Don't argue hands with me. <laughs> but that's what I'm, but that's what I'm saying though. It's like, you, you play with it all day and there's like specks of dirt and hair and corn and there's always like crap in there. What are you just going to take a big chunk out of it? Yeah, yes. you don't want to meet in that. And what if they check to see if they have a poo-poo? I've seen my son actually, you know, put his finger down his pants because my butt's itchy. I don't know what he touched. I get him to the bathroom, but he's yeah. probably got poopy on his finger, and yeah, now it's hey, in Steve, the Play-Doh. Don't, 
don't talk about your son how many times when you wipe and your thumb goes through the paper. It happens. Oh, my God. I wash my hands one out of five times. I will be – I had it on my wrist the other day with Parker, my baby. I'm like, come on, Parker, cut daddy some slack. Then I don't have his legs and he's kind of kicking and he puts his foot in it and kicks my shirt, kicks my cheek. And I got poop on my shirt and my cheek. I'm like, how did this happen? How? I'm like, man, do get it. Yeah. Brett. Yeah, I don't Brett, know. this is what you have to look forward to. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I am so looking forward to it when I'm – not wait. 32. All right. Now, hold on, wait, wait, hold thing. on. I got to send a text real quick. Still waiting. <laughs> the last thing I need to hit real quick, Southside. Mm-hmm. We've received a couple emails from people that want to know where they can get Yeah, Come On gear. I've responded. Now, granted, I only check our email on Wednesdays. So sometimes it sits for days. <laughs> yeah. This is something we should probably promote on the show. Well, there is a website. I am wearing currently the red, white, and blue. I have them with a gray front with an American flag uh, netting. Uh, Mark, you should have one of these, but it's a Yet Come On hat. YetComeOn.com is where you go, and you can get the lids. You can get Yet Come On masks. Um, I have uh, like six different shirts for dudes. I've got two shirts for girls. I've got a bottle opener with my voice recorded going, Yet Come On. Yeah, come on. Every time you open a beer, <laughs> uh, I think I've thought of everything, uh, but just go to yet and it helps this money goes. I'm not trying to get rich. I'm just trying to put my kids through college. It goes to their college funds and they're great kids. If you ever meet Can I tell you Southside. Oh my God. I've seen more of Steve's nipple in one night than I have in 25 years. Well, I know. I just Steve, sent you another one. Can I tell, I'm hmm? not waiting on you, Steve. When I tell Barney, I'm waiting. Uh, can I tell you, Steve, that Brett does wear his Yer- Yet Come On Gator every single day. It works. That's my boy right there. That's my boy, Brett. That's Promote my boy. that brand, baby. It's all about yeah. that brand recognition. Yeah. When was the last time you washed it? I actually have two of them, and I wash them pretty much every two or three days. Uh, you're a better man than me. I don't think I've ever washed my mask in a year and a half this pandemic. Yeah, you got to watch them. Disgusting. Wash them. I'm vaccinated. Mm. I, you got both shots or one? I got both. I got them both right before the Braves started. Okay. They wanted they wanted you to, I'm assuming. Yeah, I've gotten one. Uh, my boy is holding out, and I don't blame him. I, I, if I could, I would. I just didn't have a choice. So, here we are. Zero I'm one shot, and I get my next one next uh, next Monday. My second well, look, we Biden has ordered so many shots. Within six months, you'll be able to buy a shot like a five-hour energy at Big Lots. Like, they're going to be yeah. so readily available. Like, you'll be able to administer your own at-home shot. Unless we mm. turn and send them all to India. Oh, shit. They could probably use them right now. They I'm could. All right. Well, y'all, y'all, y'all keep these uh, areola shots. I'm thinking about having them reduced. I just wanted y'all to have the original. Well, I'm good. I'm good. I see him. I'm good. I'll take your word for it. We do. All right, let's do one more. Then we got to get out of here. It's it's a school night. I mean, it's oh, a Friday. Uh, I got a Braves game. game. Yeah, baby. Mark and I Come have on. to entertain clients in the morning. Shit, we do got to be <laughs> in super early tomorrow, don't we? Yeah. And we have to wear button downs. Are you all serious? Right. We have to here's dress to up. The, yeah. Here's to Dude, the hard work. I actually thought about wearing my tuxedo from my wedding in tomorrow because they all have to walk by me to get into the TV studio. I thought it would be funny if I'm sitting there editing audio in a full tuxedo. Okay, here's the thing. That is a great idea. Not yet. And here's yeah. why I say not yet. Five months in. Not yes, doing it. because everybody doesn't know you yet. A, a year from now, 100%, you have to do it. I'll join you. All right. Here's to the hardworking man of radio, whether you're in button downs, tuxedos, sleeveless shirts, to us, to the men of radio, and better yet, to the people that listen to us. Thank you. Cheers. Joke's on y'all. This is just water. I hear you, dick. I'm about half drunk. Good. Yes. And to all the a-holes we've worked with, you know, oh, to you. Did I just say, don't shoot vodka? Ugh. I know you did. You hey, how's, did. How's Jason doing? So here's the funny he thing. When Jason, when Jason and Steve first started, Brett, it's, okay, see you, Brett. He's done. He's like, I'm, I'm out. I don't know where he's going. Brett's like, are you, like, you and Jason were like BFF there for a minute. Are y'all still pals? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like, you know, you work together, you know, we, we, we are totally different people. 
so, you know, I think that it just, uh, it, it's tough hanging out. It's tough for me to hang out now that I got kids. Mm -hmm. So it's just a game changer. You know that it's like, I don't want to bring my kids over and try to socialize chasing them. I can't always get a babysitter. I don't always trust the babysitter coming my way, especially with the little one. So wait, back, you know. back that up. Why don't you trust the babysitter? Uh, no, it's just like my wife will be like, okay, she'd be great with Brooks, but I don't know about Parker. I don't want to put in Parker down or I don't want this. What if Parker gets sick, you know, too young, there just comes to where you're the right age. Once they're perfect, then they're going to college. So it's a I tough, really, tough Steve, I honestly, and don't you judge me. I honestly thought when you said that you meant, I don't trust the babysitter because she may be hot. No, no, <laughs> I'm done. I turned it off. I, I turned it off. Uh, I promised I, I, I would, I would. I don't know what I would do. Uh, I would never have sex with another woman because I promised my wife I wouldn't, and I can't start with dudes, so I'm done. I'm 419 and 0. I don't have any guys. But, Mark, Congrats. you're cute. Brett's got you a know nice what? Look, tushy. Dude, hey, I will give you the best 45 seconds of the week. You know what? So let's just keep that on the back burner. Uh, you know, I never promised I wouldn't hook up with a dude. I never have, but, you know, what the heck. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I thought about this today. <laughs> if I had to write Steve's obituary, oh, I'm going to write 420 because that's going to be life. Oh, wow. That's a good point. Oh, wow. Barney Damn. getting all deep. Brett that's what you ought to do. Hey, whenever you have a guest on Barney, uh, you know, I know you, you schedule them out a little bit ahead of time. You ought to wrap the show with writing their obituary. Well, that would okay. be a trip. I that would be a funny. That's wacky I, morning show radio right there. <laughs> I, I did tell Mark Owens today that I thought it would have been funny for me to set up an extra computer and create his Wikipedia during the show. No, but, but see, nobody cares. You know, I mean, they just put, he's the, he's the jackass up on the big screen. and He was Phil Turan at the bird show. Like, and then I'll have like an ex-girlfriend be like, he's got a small wing. Like, that'll be all it is. And that's not fun. Yeah. That's yeah, tough. Steve. Steve deserves a Wikipedia. I deserve like an asterisk. God bless you. That was really nice. That's like one of the nicest things you ever said to me, Mark. Sorry, We're I'm gonna end the back. show on that note. No, no, you <laughs> stay. No, no. There are no takebacks. There right, are no look, take backs. We uh, yes, you're right. We should probably wrap this up. It's the Yet yeah, Come On Show, brought to you by fantastic sponsors and fantastic men of radio. I'm Southside Steve. That's Brett Barney and our special guest today, Mixmaster Mark. Thank you for listening. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on.